So I was just talking in the last video about the hyena style attacks. And they'll have like a black market and they'll like gang up on someone. It looks like hyenas attacking someone. And this happens in Chinese culture. And Taiwan is not an exception. Um, Taiwan's trying to clean it up a little bit, but not succeeding. As an example for this, go back to 2014 and search the sunflower movement. And you'll find some literature, maybe, you might have to do some digging. They'll talk about a black box. Taiwan's government at the time, controlled by the, the, the mainstream traditional political party, different from the current, it's opposition parties now taken over, uh, the presidency and the legislature. But at that time, the, the KMT, the nationalist party, uh, the, the political party started by Chiang Kai-shek, was still in control. They, there was one term where the opposition party had a president, but they still, he still didn't control the legislature. Now the opposition party, the DPP, uh, Min Jindang, uh, is, is the Chinese name, uh, they control the president's legislature. But at this time, they still had control, and it was the last time that they had control of it all. They were trying to set up secret talks for trade with China. It would be secret meetings for talks of trade with China between the Taiwan government and the Chinese government. And the Taiwanese were concerned about trade. Now, I as an American had concern because at the same time, Taiwan's government was trying to buy F-16s from America. They had F-16 A, ABs was the model, and they were trying to get upgraded to CDs. They'd paid for it, but the upgrade hadn't happened yet. And of course now, I mean, I, it doesn't take an idiot to guess why America was reluctant to upgrade to CDs when Taiwan was trying to have secret talks with China. Uh, the Taiwanese didn't really think about that security issue, the, but that black box would have been a place. They call it a black box, a secret negotiation, a black box, where they basically, they get together and they have their little hyena strategy meeting. How are we going to hyena attack these guys? And then they go out and they put on their show, oh, well, you know, I kind of don't like that company. Well, I heard a report that you had actually done, and it's this scripted thing, and it's all part of a, of, I mean, literally, it is a real conspiracy. Like, they get together, and they get a secret little plan in their meeting, and then they go out and attack the person in, in public, and it's all seamless. You can't prove any of it. It's just a normal thing. And the students in Taiwan who were in the Sunflower Movement that took over their legislature knew that of this great danger because they're used to that hyena-style attack in their culture constantly. And they're going, they're setting up another hyena-style attack venue to deal with trade and totally take away all of our jobs. And they know that because it's a thing in their culture that they do. They recognized it. They, we, don't, we couldn't get away with this in America. They, they might try a little bit. They, they do it a lot in, you know, the Sunday morning horror stories with the pastor and the elders being mean to somebody. Like, that happens a little bit. But we're talking on a very normative, very frequent, culture-wide scale, including government and business, all the time, all over the place in Chinese culture. All right. Well, back, back to the thing with Chinese culture. Why is it that in China... They would just copy a school or they would take a product and copy it and then hyena attack to get the inventor out of the country. Again, this is a culture where they believe it's morally right and fair for all money to flow one way into China. Ideas, intellectual property, inventions to flow in. If you invent something in America... That's Chinese property by right. And you should pay royalties to China to make and sell your product in America only. Because China's entitled to everything because they're the center of the universe. They really believe it. And they shouldn't believe what you really believe. You should believe what they really believe because they're the ones that are Chinese after all. This is their thinking and they will say so. It's, it's, this is not some little thought that they have that they need the, the counselor to help them uncover after a year of therapy. They publish it. They get up and they say so at their speeches. We're the center of the universe. We're the ones with Han blood. They're the foreigners and they owe us. That's what's good for the world. We have to take over the world so we can have peace. It was 1999. I was with my Taiwanese friend in college. 
people from the Chinese government were touring America. We had dinner with them. My friend says, Jesse, don't mention anything about our spy plane having just crashed. You know, George W. Bush was there. Uh, no, 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 no. It wasn't 99. George Bush had just become president. I think we're talking 2001. He said, don't mention anything about our spy plane having just crashed. Don't mention anything controversial. We sat down to dinner and I said to the guy in the Chinese government, what do you think about our spy plane crashing in your country? And my, my Ta Taiwanese buddy, oh, like he was like looking down and eating the whole time, like keeping his head literally low at the table. Like his face was almost in his plate the whole time. Like he was partially mad at me for not obeying him, uh, kind of obeying him. And uh, Parsi just worried that fists were going to fly and he didn't want to get hit. Well, I'm calm and easy going. So I, you know, he, th this, this guy is eventually yelling at me. He's like right in my face, shouting at me at the top of his lungs. And I'm sitting there going, yeah, okay. All right. He's close talking loudly. He can express himself. That's interesting. You know? And, and so my friend is, you know, and we eventually we ended in a positive conversation, but one of the things that he kept saying to me, was that we must have one government in the whole world. The reason countries fight is because they're not under one government. He said, the world must have a singular government to unite everybody. It's the only way for world peace. He was going on and on and on and on and on about this. And I said, you know, you've got a really good point. He's like, hmm. I said, I said, you know, one government in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got a great point there. And he stopped. And I said, now, who's going to run that one world government? And he stopped, thought about it. Like, he never thought about that. I mean, the obvious answer is China, right? You actually have to say that? Well, but wait, maybe I can't say that. That sounds aggressive. He never thought about it before. So he's sitting there speechless. I said, who's going to run that government? He's, huh? I said, are you going to run it? He goes, oh, well, uh, no, no. I said, oh, you want us to run it? Oh, oh, no, oh, no, oh. I said, oh, you see the problem? He goes, yeah. Ah, yeah, I see the problem. Okay, after dinner, there was another guy that seemed a little bit more kind hearted, a little bit more like he drank the Kool-Aid. See, the guy was yelling at, or yelling at me at dinner. I think he just, he seemed to be too smart and knowledgeable about events. And I mean, in some ways not smart, but he just seemed to be like one of the guys serving the Kool-Aid as it were. But after there's this other guy that was really kind, he seemed more the, one of the honest innocents who drank the Kool-Aid. And he was saying to me, all his eyes were moist and his, they were red with tears. He said to me, do you think one day we will be able to have one single government so that we can have peace? Do you think it's possible? And I said, I said, oh yeah, it absolutely is possible. It will happen but not until Jesus comes back and runs it himself. And then he was like totally dismayed because that was not the answer that he wanted. I don't, I try to explain this to people. China is not trying to acquire the territories in their pretentious nine dash line. Search it. China, just search nine dash line. And you'll see maps of China. They're not trying to reclaim Taiwan. They're trying to take over the world because they genuinely believe that the Chinese flag should fly everywhere. Because that's only fair. Now, I went long in my last video and I'm going to change topics kind of and I'm going to talk in the next video about how this, well, podcast episode also, I'm going to talk about how this relates to the manufacturing supply chain. That's coming.